Okay, the last type of purely geometric transformation I want to talk about for now is um, projection onto a line. So again, let me just start with a very simple example. What if we want to take points in the plane in the 2D plane and project them onto the X axis? So if I have 2D plane and basically you can think about it it's almost better to think about it in terms of points like if i have a point here think of it as a vector i want to think of the projection let me use p actually instead of t for projection projection of x would be that point right so um and this is going to happen for any point in the plane if I, that was x1 if i pick some other point over here and call it x2 uh, its projection onto the x-axis will be there. You're basically dropping it directly like, like a right angle kind of onto the x-axis. So that's P of x2. I suppose if I wanted to draw the same picture with vectors, um, you would have something like this. You'd have the vector x1 would be something like that, right? And then the projection, you're projecting the tip of it. So it's almost like the shadow of the vector. You shine the light from directly above. And similarly for, although for X2 though, I guess that would be shining a light from below <laughs> instead of from above. And um, its projection would be like, would be like that, right? Um, so, yeah, it's like you're sort of doing something like that where you're projecting it down onto the line. And then the question is, first off, is this linear? Um, it's a transformation. Um, it's still from R2 to R2 because even though the vectors all end up on the x-axis, we're still considering them living in the two-dimensional plane. And um, let's write out what this is, projection onto the x-axis. The whole question about so the three blue one brown definition that a transformation is linear if it if it takes parallel equally spaced lines remain if, if parallel and equally spaced lines remain parallel and equally spaced after the transformation. It's a little weird here because everything gets smushed onto the x axis but but it is true that if you took two like vertical lines. Right that they would actually just be smushed into these two points. And they would still be equally spaced. I mean, parallel, you kind of lose a sense of parallel, but they're, they're still the same space. Um, and if I take like, yeah, like three lines like that, then that would become these three points, which are still equally spaced. So it is linear. Um, I'll give a different criteria for linear transformations in a later video. But so what's the matrix? Um, Well, the matrix, again, as always, is uh, you just apply it, you know, you just apply P to the vector one, zero, and to the vector zero, one, and those are your columns of your matrix. It's kind of what we're seeing over and over again, right? Um, well, we should be able to draw this pretty easily. If we take one, zero, and we project it onto the x-axis. Uh, well, it's already on the x-axis, right? So if that's one zero, it equals its own projection. And if we take zero one and project it onto the x-axis, well, it actually gets destroyed and it becomes just the zero vector. So P of zero one just gets smushed down into nothing right it's zero zero it's a zero vector so there you go we can just replace each of these we can replace this with one zero and we can replace this with zero zero and that's the matrix so so the matrix is just this is a little bit interesting looking one zero 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 so this so many zeros does show you something about the smushing effect that everything gets like collapsed down onto the x axis right. Um, by the way, again, I've been saying this like one thing that's probably pretty clear is that P of 
x, y, you're just getting rid of the y and turning it into zero, right? And um, just as a check, if you multiply this matrix times x, y, I bet you'll also agree that you get x zero. So that's that's a check that that is the correct matrix. Okay, so that's the idea of a projection. Um, they actually come up a lot in applications, and so they're really important. Um, but as always, projecting onto the x-axis or the y-axis or something like that is easy. Um, by the way, I should I should say I probably should have said this earlier. This is called an orthogonal projection. Um, that you're always projecting. Uh, by right angles, you're basically projecting. It's almost like you're shining a light from far away perpendicular to the thing you're projecting onto. Um, so maybe here, I would just use the word, and we tend to talk about orthogonal projections. So this is an orthogonal, I'm trying to stick it in right there um, in front of the word projection. Okay. Now, but then the question becomes, well, what about more complicated projections, like say we wanted to project um, on a, some other line, some tilted line in the plane, right? So here's my plane, here's some tilted line. And um, say we wanna project onto this line again, orthogonally, which means at a right angle. It's a fancy term for perpendicular. Um, so now if I just take a few points, like this point would then end up, um, can I do this with the, maybe. This would end up, <laughs> hmm, it's more trouble than it's worth. Okay, that would end up there, right? If this was X1, that would be P of X1 sort of given by a right angle, something like that. Like every point, and we're gonna do that with every point in the plane, right? Or every vector, if you wanna think about it as vectors instead. So, you know, a point over here uh, ends up right there. So X2, P of X2, or I suppose if I really wanted to, I could just think about drawing a vector here and a vector there instead of points. Similarly, rather than draw the whole picture again, I'm just trying to give you a sense what these look like. Um, okay, so, um, all right. Well, let me let me speak, pick a specific line. I mean, like, yeah, let's actually pick a specific line. Like, say we picked the line, um, how do we specify a line in linear algebra where we can think of it as a span? So say this line is the span of the vector three comma four. That's about right, right? No, actually I wanna say four comma three. Doesn't matter that much, but it looks more like it's over four up three than it, because it's a little less than 45 degrees uh, slope. So, um, yeah, what's the formula? Then what's the formula? What's the matrix? Well, let's see. We could do something very similar to the last video with the reflection where we could rotate this line um first off all we have to do is find out what happens to one zero and zero one right and we could do the same thing where we rotate the line so that's horizontal project onto the x-axis and then rotate back so um so a you know just need to find out we just need to compute p of um one zero and P of zero one. Uh, B, we could um, rotate, project, rotate. And you might wanna pause the video and do that. I mean, it's kind of nice 
it's the exact same process we did in the last video. Um, like in the last video. But uh, but let's try something else. I want to do something a little more general because projections are really important and there's a nice general way to think about this. Uh, because um, the rotate project rotate only works in 2D. And I want to think about something that actually works in any dimension. Yeah, like this is a two dimensional argument. I mean, you can do something similar in higher dimensions, but it, the, the rotations are more complicated. So let's do something that works in general. And in order to do that, let's actually separate the line out of the picture above and try to sort of think about how to generally write down this projection. So let me just draw a line here. There's a nice line, line I want to project onto. Let's, um, it goes to the origin. So let's pick an origin point. Um, and then let's draw a random vector X that we want to project onto the line. And so if you think about it, uh, the projection would be something like this. If we sort of end up, um, you know, dropping the perpendicular onto this line. Somehow that was not, <laughs> that's close enough. All right. Uh, okay, so that's, this is the projection right here. And the angle is theta, that'll come out to be useful. Um, this is the line of projection and I wanna somehow get the formula for P of X in terms of X and in terms of the line. But if we want to specify the line, I mean, if we're going to use the line, we need to sort of specify it. And um, the nice thing is that we can always write, we sort of mentioned this already, right? We can always write a line as a span. And this doesn't matter what dimension we're in. It's a span of some vector. So let's call it the span of U. And I'm going to just specify here that U is actually a unit vector. Um, meaning that its length is one. Because it's sort of nice not to have to worry about um, magnitude of vectors and sort of, if you, if you just want to purely think about direction, it's sort of nice to use unit vectors because you're just, that's just pointing you in a specific direction. And so let me draw you on the picture here. Um, I'll just make it kind of short to say, well, there it is, it's in the picture. And I claim that actually we can get a formula for P of X in terms of X and in, in U, which is a little bit surprising. Maybe not that surprising. It certainly points in the same direction as U. P of X and U are in the same direction. And so P of X is a scalar multiple of U. That's, maybe it's actually worth noting that right now. So note, P of X is uh, equals equals C times U for some scalar C. And so maybe what I wanna say is that we just wanna find that scalar. And I claim we can use some geometry to do that. So let me draw, let me pull this triangle out of the picture now. I'm just gonna draw the triangle um, that involves X and P of X. Uh, by the way, I guess this was a right angle right there. That was the point of a projection, right? Um, and okay, so let me just draw this picture again down here. So here is our X, um, like that. I'm not even gonna draw the line anymore. I'm just gonna draw the triangle. So there's our P of X. I'm actually just gonna make it horizontal just for, you know, just for convenience. Um, and here is the perpendicular again. You can draw that right there. And let me just draw you on here. You know, we said, yep, forgot to change that. 
So here's you. Oh, hey, look at that. Um, so there's our vector. There's our unit vector u. Um, and let me put the angle theta back in here. Okay. So we can do some analysis of this situation. First off, there's a hypotenuse, right? And the hypotenuse has a specific length. The hypotenuse of this triangle, this right triangle, has length magnitude of x, right? Because that's the length of x. Um, so what is uh, this, this base length? Well, it's pretty clearly, it's just the hypotenuse times cosine of theta, right? And the fact that we've got two vectors here, x and u, and there's a cosine in between them puts me in mind of the dot product. Uh, you know, this part's a little bit of a leap, but go with me for a second. So maybe I'll just say over here, recall um, the dot product. There's this geometric description of the dot product of two vectors, that it's the length of the first vector times the length of the second vector times the cosine of the angle between them. I guess I could have written this for a general vector v and w, but it's true here for the specific vectors x and u, um, where theta is, yeah, theta is the angle between them. OK, um, but, 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 but we picked u specifically right to be a unit vector so this is actually length one oops uh this is length one and so it kind of disappears from the formula and in fact we really just have uh, length of x times cosine theta over here which is exactly what we have here so in fact this expression is really just x dot u right it's kind of a weird thing to think but it's you know, that actually is, I mean, that's actually another thing that dot product sort of measures. It's like the component of X in the direction of U, and this especially works if you use a unit vector because you don't have to specify extra length considerations. Um, so this is exciting because like I just set up here, P of X is C times U for some scalar U, but right here we have length one and the whole length here is a number. This is this is some number, right? X dot u is a number. That's that's a thing to remember. I'll even just put a note on that here. This equals a number. You know, it's a dot dot product two vectors gives you a number. Um, and that actually is the scaling factor. That's the kind of amazing thing. That is the scaling factor we would put. I'm claiming that x dot u is the c that we're looking for because u has length one and so to go from one to this like pretend this was length seven pretend x dot u was seven just say you know like maybe i'll just write that over to the side here like you know say x dot u equaled seven then that's length of the base of the triangle right then that would mean p of x was seven u because u is length one and the whole thing is length seven. And so it's seven times that. So P of X would just be seven times. That. So that actually is the scalar that fits in front. That's the point I'm trying to make here, which is, it looks a little abstract when, we, when I'm gonna write it, but this means basically the upshot here is, this means that P of X, we have a formula. It's actually X dot u times u so that's again that's a little weird but it's it's a number right there's a num we're putting a scalar in front of our vector u and this is actually a great formula for the um projection of a vector notice we didn't have to ex explicitly talk about theta which would be different for different x's we can just say we know the projection of x is in the direct same direction as u so it's a scalar multiple of u and the scalar multiple is actually x dot u Okay, a little weird, but let me, um, that's a formula. That's not a matrix, it's a formula, which is kind of an interesting thing. We actually have a formula for the projection. It works in any dimension. That's another thing to say. This had nothing to do with being 2D. I mean, 
x and u and p of x all form sort of a two-dimensional thing, but it doesn't really matter if this lived in three dimensions, you would still have the same argument. Um, so this works in any dimension, which is cool. And now if I want to think about it, like let's just go all the way back up to this example um, where we're doing the line spanned by this. Okay, so let me just, I'll just write that again. So back to the projection onto the span of the vector four comma three. Well, first off, so we wanted our U to be a unit vector. So four comma three is not a unit vector, but if we call this, I don't know, call this V, right? Then the length of V is the square root of four squared plus three squared, which is the square root of 25, which is five. Chose it to be nice. And so that actually means the unit vector in the same direction is um, u, which is a v, u is actually four fifths, three fifths. So that's our u in this situation. And Remember that the matrix of P of X, because that's the goal is to find the matrix, um, is the matrix whose columns are P of one, zero and P of zero, one. And so what I really wanna do is plug in these as our X values, one, zero and zero, one. So P of one zero, according to this formula we have, P of one zero is that this formula in yellow, right up boxed in yellow up here. That is, um, oops. <laughs> that is the vector one zero dotted with the vector four fifths, three fifths, and then as a scalar multiple, that's a number in front of the vector four fifths, three fifths. Looks, looks weird the first time you write it out. But right, I'm just saying like, this is X, this is U, and this is U. And the U's play different roles. Um, this dot product, you may just, you know, remember you just multiply like uh, components and, and add. So you just get one times four fifths. So this is actually just equal to four fifths. So this is four fifths times the vector four fifths, three fifths, which is 16 over 25, because I'm just going to scale everything by four fifths and then 12 over 25. And there you go, that's um, the first column of our matrix. And then for the second column, we do the same thing, but with a zero one vector, um, dotting that with this U vector that we found, and then putting that number in front of the U vector. Well, now this dot product is just three fifths, because the one matches the three fifths. Um, and so this is three fifths times the vector four fifths, three fifths, which is the vector 12 over 25, nine over 25. And that's it. That means we can now write down the matrix. Thus the matrix Um, of this projection is the matrix whose entries are 
16 over 25, 12 over 25, 12 over 25, 9 over 25. Oof. If you did the um, rotate, project, rotate back uh, way to compute this that I suggested, you should get the same answer, right? Um, you might also just write down the general, you know, you might write down, so maybe just as a challenge to you, um, find the matrix. Find the general matrix for projection onto, we did the line spanned by three, four fifths and three fifths. Find the Find the matrix for projection onto the span of uh, just U1, U2. So any, you know, this is a unit vector. So you need U1 squared plus U2 squared to set it to equal one. But um, yeah, there's a general formula for the span that if you just go turn the three fifths and four fifths into U ones and U twos, or maybe irrespectively, then you'll find um, the formula, the general formula. So, and then you can also generalize this to three D, um, but the span of U one, U two, U three, and so it works. Uh, okay, that's plenty, I'm sure. So I'll stop there.